welcome to the fourth installment of the Dodgers Zoom Club. I'm so happy that you are joining us tonight on this Monday night and what's become a weekly thing that we certainly look forward to and we certainly want you to be able to continue to participate. So make sure you're taking pictures of yourself and your family watching the Dodgers Zoom party, taking selfies of you guys doing it as well. You hashtag Dodger, hashtag Dodger Zoom party and we will play some of those back during Dita Rule and the seventh inning stretch. So once again, welcome. This is brought to you by 76. I'm Juana Rizzo, along with my co-host, the Dodgers play-by-play man, Joe Davis. Joe, take it away. All right, Alana, I want to let everybody know who's here tonight. I'm sure you recognize the faces, but let's do it formally. We've got the skipper, Dave Roberts, joining us. We've got the three-time Cy Young Award winner, former MVP, Clayton Kirchhoff. One of the leaders, one of the veterans, one of the top hitters in the National League, Justin Turner. The reigning MVP in the NF, Cody Bellinger. One of the newest Dodgers, a five-time All-Star, a Cy Young winner, David Price. Alex Wood was an All-Star with the Dodgers in 17. Quick trip away, he's back. He's with us tonight. A Riverside native, one of the Dodger catchers, Austin Barnes. And we had to bring an old guy in too. Andre Ethier, 12-year big league veteran, all 12 of those years with the Dodgers, all-star a couple of times, and now wearing a beautiful hat. <laughs> nice to have some of our current players on here as well. And one guy joining us for the first time on this Dodgers Zoom party is left-hander David Price. David, it's good to see you. What's life been like for you the last couple of months? Um, quarantine. Just been hanging out at the house, trying to uh, – Find different stuff to do to stay active. We've been outside early on quite a bit. Um, trying to find stuff to do, just keeping our sanity, playing more board games, trying to do more arts and crafts, stuff like that. Um, I haven't ventured out into anything new like cooking or painting, but um, my wife has done a little bit of painting. She's cooked already, but um, I kind of try and keep it simple. You know, I just use it as uh, downtime, time to uh, enjoy this time with my family, and it's, it's been good for that. We've had conversations with some of your teammates about this, but what have you done to keep that arm in shape as you get ready for hopefully some sort of spring training 2.0? Um, I mean, at first was playing, playing catch into a sock. You know, that was, uh, that was what I was working with at first, or you know, throwing a baseball into uh, the couch pillows, you know, stuff like that. We have a, a better setup now um, here in Arizona. Over the last month, and I've been able to throw into a cage in the past couple of weeks, I've been able to throw with a person. So um, that's been good. Um, just trying to keep it loose, keep it fresh, keep it ready. Um, if we get that call, you know, it'll, it'll be ready to go. Yeah, and Arizona's opening up a little bit, so hopefully you'll be able to have some more interactions with uh, some of your teammates that also live in Arizona. And, David, we have a fan question for you. This one is coming from I am AJ 23 Okay. This question is for David Price. I know you were a 33 in honor of your former teammate, James Shields, but was there a number that you originally wanted to take before you decided on wearing 33? Um, yes, there is. I, uh, I chose 18 just because one of my favorite numbers is eight. It was close to 10, the number that I was already wearing. Um, I told Alex, our head clubby guy, and for the Dodgers, that I was going to wear 18. And I started thinking about it a little bit. My wife asked me if there was any significance to that number. And I was like, no, I just picked it. It was looks kind of like 10. It's, it's a smaller number that I like. Then I got to thinking about it, and I was like, I don't want my teammates or Dodger fans to be thinking that I'm talking about 2018 with this number, so I want to switch to something else. And I switched to 33 because it had meaning to me. Uh, and I picked um, picked that because of Shields, but um, I guess at first I did pick 18, and um, I, I thought better of it. We figured tonight, guys, instead of uh, just firing off questions individually, we'd throw out a few topics and, and kind of go guy by guy and get answers. So the first one we're going to do, uh, I'm going to start with you, JT. Whether it was when you came up and you met a player that you had idolized or you faced a player that you would idolize or some of the celebrities that come through Dodger Stadium that you get to meet, uh, starstruck moments. Who's done that to you? Who have you been starstruck by? That's easy. Uh, Kobe. 
Uh, yeah. Only got to meet him once. He came in the clubhouse uh, before the World Series uh, in 18 and uh, couldn't find words. So uh, that was uh, an awe moment for me. Kirsch, how about you? Other than Dre, uh, when I got to meet Dre for the first time, it was probably uh, – Maybe Corey and Topanga from Boy Meets World. That was a big night. Uh, that was, you know, that was my childhood right there. Corey and Topanga. I don't even know their real names, but uh, that was and huge yeah. for me. Yeah. And then uh, Justin Timberlake. That was kind of my guy. I was like one of my favorite celebrity crushes, kind of. So uh, that was that was it. Belly, how about you? Unmute yourself. <laughs> Cast away. Cast away. Hit the mute. <laughs> It said, it said the host muted me. It's not my fault. Uh, I would say the same with uh, JT and Kobe Bryant. I was speechless as well. Okay. And then uh, I would say the coolest person that I've seen, like, sit next to the on-deck circle would be Jennifer Lopez. Mm. So I'd say Barnes. that's too. Barnsley, how about Starstruck for you? Yeah, when uh, Kobe came down in that World Series before the game, it came down pretty late, but – it was, a, it was a pretty cool moment. Kind of just like dabbed you up and said, let's get it. And I was like, all right. <laughs> Woody? You're muted too, Alex. Alex, muted. There you go. All right, there we go. Uh, obviously, the guys have said Kobe. Yeah, that was obviously a huge one for me too. Uh, but during the World Series in 2017, getting to meet uh, – George Bush and George Bush Sr. I mean, that was the first time I ever met a president. It was a pretty, pretty cool moment. Uh, so that, that was up there for me, too, for sure. David, any starstruck moments for you? Um, yeah. In, uh, in 2008, I got to meet Obama before he was president. Um, and I thought that was, uh, that was pretty special. I didn't know what to say to him. And uh, that, was, that was definitely a moment I'll never forget. Okay, cool. Keeping the uh, group theme going as far as questions are concerned. And Clayton, I'm going to start with you. When baseball eventually returns, and we're certainly hoping that it's sooner rather than later, there's going to be some changes that we're going to have to go through. So what do you think is going to be harder, giving up the high fives and the fist pumps or giving up kind of spitting out those sunflower seeds and the gum that you guys chomp on in the dugout? Uh, yeah, I don't know if either of that's going to be possible. So <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I mean – I guess it's doable. I just don't, you know, I don't want to get into all that. But um, I hope baseball comes back along. I really do. I just hope they can figure out a way where we can still at least maybe elbow dab or something, you know. I, I need to – I need some encouragement from the guys. You know, everybody knows I like to give a firm <laughs> fist bump. So, I need, I need something. I think I could maybe do away with spitting, but I think most guys would say they couldn't do that either. So, we're going to need to figure it out, though. Yeah, Sam, would you, do you agree with that? I mean, you're, you're so used to having so many different rituals and routines. and How difficult is it going to be for you to make some of those changes that obviously would probably be protocol when you guys resume play? Yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be weird. Like, you dab everybody up before the, uh, before the game. Everybody has their handshakes and all that. But, yeah, spinning would be probably pretty hard not to spit, too, on a baseball field. So, you're not I mean, that would be a strange one for sure. Alex, what about you? I mean, is everyone going to have their own rosin bag? I mean, is it going to be hard for you to kind of get out of your normal routine? Well, they made that announcement about pine tar in spring training. I heard they might put some stick on a little rosin bag and throw it behind the bag and have your individual rosin bag with, with pine tar. I, I, I don't know if that'll happen. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see, see what we end up deciding uh, once all this gets figured out. Yeah, and JT, you're obviously a, a creature of habit every time, you know, you're even, you know, in the hole before you even step up to the on deep circle, all the different taps that you make with your bat on the steps. I mean, you guys are such uh, routine oriented and creatures of habit. I won't even call it superstitious, just a routine. How difficult is it going to be for you? Yeah, it's tough because, you know, there's so many little nuances in the game of baseball that I think teammates enjoy celebrating uh, during the game. And, uh, you know, a lot of that is by high-fiving or a nice pat on the butt when the guy walks by and you say nice play. And uh, to not have that anymore, there's going to have to be new creative ways to, uh, I guess, celebrate those moments in the game. And, uh, you know, one thing about baseball that's cool is the, the pregame handshakes. And, Alana, you know better than anyone because you film them all. Um, <laughs> 
But, uh, yeah, we're going to have to do something else for that, too. So maybe Kirsch will just do a lot more dancing up and down the dugout. <laughs> Whatever it takes, guys. Whatever it takes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys, the uh, Pine Tar game was on MLB Network the other day. George Brett and one of the great emotional shows that we've ever seen in baseball. Them exploding out of the dugout. Cody, I'm going to start with you. If one on a one to five scale is super calm and quiet inside, and five is George Brett, just like all this rage inside you, where do you fall on that scale? For, for what? If one. I've never even calm. seen that. Billy's never seen that in his life. Uh, Billy, oh, I have, George but I couldn't, hear the, I couldn't hear him. Okay, so if one is calm, like the most calm guy possible inside, and five is crazed, full of rage, ready to snap like this at any moment, where do you fall? One to five. I'm a three. Okay. Look at Dre right there holding him back. Look at Dre. <laughs> <laughs> Get him, Dre. Hey, Dre, Dre. what are you One to five. <laughs> uh, I was still in the minor leagues then. Oh, okay. All right, good. Hey, Robert, <laughs> Doc's there too. Dre, yeah, you're a five, right? I mean, a viewer five. Dre's a five. Yeah, Dre's, Dre's a ten. Dre's a ten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Any of these Dre guys punch on tonight, Dre, close to you on that scale? Anybody close to a five? Yeah, I'd be mad. Yeah. <laughs> <Barnes and Steve. laughs> I'd be upset. I use a lot of pine tar, too, so. Right. You do. Yeah. I'd be pissed. Doc, I've seen I've seen Andy Green get under your skin a little bit, turn you into a five. Yeah, that's pr probably not one of my better moments. Um, <laughs> something I certainly regret. I was I was up oh. north of a five for sure. That's my bad, Doc. Yeah, I was gonna. That was, <laughs> hey, it was Woody's fault. <laughs> that is my fault. <laughs> my bad. Woody, are you? The claim was right behind nice me. Call, so nice I saw calling, that. Woody. <laughs> Woody, are you a my mistake? Four or five? <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you a sneaky four? Like, is uh, there... can be. <laughs> yeah. I think we all can be. Right. But Tim McClellan's hard to get mad at. Try. Yeah, when you when you strike out with him, he just tells you you're out. Strike three. <laughs> right. What? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. All right. If you have these guys, these active players that you were teammates with, who would you put up? Close to you on a scale of one to five of the active guys. Barnes. What's that mean? Uh, one to five or what? I was asking Ray of, of the Dodgers who he would put up against himself as far as a five, the guys that he played with. Barnes. What's your answer, Dre? <laughs> no. Who would be the like, most like that? Yeah, who yeah. would be you as far as the five of these current guys? Oh, yeah, 100% Barnes. Uh. <laughs> Easy little guy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Doc, have you ever, uh, you know, sometimes you guys do stuff on the baseball field that perhaps you get home and either your wife or your somebody says, I can't believe you just did that on the field. Is there anything other than the Andy Green situation that you kind of got home and Trisha was like, what are you doing? Um, I, I think certainly the Andy Green thing uh, was at the top of the list. She was at book club and I guess, you know, I get tossed and her phone is blowing up. Her book club friends are going, what's going on? She's like, Dave got kicked out. He got into a fight. Um, my daughter calls me and is very disappointed in me at that point in time. Outside of that, I've dropped way too many F-bombs. Um, <laughs> I, I just don't get the delay for me, unfortunately. But there's a lot of things I'm, I'm certain my actions aren't appropriate. Who, who has dropped more F-bombs than, I mean, I'll just say last season, you, Rich Hill, or Walker Bueller? Uh, not even close. Rich Hill. Rich I got Rich Hill. <laughs> I got Rich, Walker, then Austin, then me. <laughs> no contest. No contest. Hey, Richie's number one, though. Rich Hill. He did it at the stadium, too. Yeah. He got arrested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't mess with the hills. 
Man, I, I, I wish asked him after that, and I said, you have so much streak right now. <laughs> so much <hill> after <laughs> Uh, when you're trying to bring this into a Patriots game, that doesn't apply. I can't do that, Coach Hill. It's a curse of the Patriots. Well, uh, I, can't tell, I can't tell you what I asked him. No. Can't. I can't. Yeah, all right. Uh, we, we, we checked in with David on the phone uh, in the quarantine, but this is the first trip on a Zoom call here for both Alex and Austin. Alex, what's the quarantine been like for you? How are you filling up your time? Uh, a lot of walks with my wife and our dog early on. Um, you know, just figuring out a way to work out and throw. Uh, uh, we made the move over to L.A. two weekends ago and got getting settled in here, uh, trying to get locked in at our place. But been outdoors probably more than I ever have with my wife, so uh, it's been fun from that aspect. Awesome. How about for you, Austin? Yeah, I mean it's it's been good. Um, a lot of a lot of Netflix, a lot of I got back into video games. I feel like I'm a, in 21 in college again. But it's uh no, we've been working out. Me and my wife. Like, hey, word like, on the street is your video game playing is well below average. I mean, no, I heard that. These are your teammates. I second that statement. Yeah. <laughs> no, hey, Gavin's really good. Jock's not. Gavin's very really back. Gavin's but Gavin. Gavin's good. Gavin's nice. But Jock, Jock can't say anything. What are you playing? <laughs> Call of Duty. He, he's the worst. I think Barnes is better than Jock. Yeah. <laughs> Cody, hey, I'm, nice now. I'm nice now, Bill. Hey, that just made Barnes' day. <laughs> it's true. I knew that already. Didn't make my day. Austin, where does Cody fall in these uh, video games? Right? Cody's good. Cody's right below uh, Lexi. Okay. All right. Uh, we've got a fan question for Austin. Cue it up, guys. Ooh. Look at this little guy. My name is Elliot Wilson from Louisville, Kentucky, and I have a question for Austin Barnes. How did you learn to catch a 100 mile an hour fastball? Yeah, I just got, you get lucky. No, no it's just reactions, really. <laughs> kind of try to stop it. Uh, no, there's some hard throwers on our team, and it's, uh, some got different stuff. Joe Kelly and Gruder, uh, is pretty nasty. But uh, yeah, you just kind of just stick your glove up. Hopefully, it goes in there. <laughs> no, he's not even doing himself justice because Austin Elliott is uh, one of the best, if not the best, receiver in all of baseball. So when guys are throwing 100 miles an hour and the ball's moving, he makes it look very easy. And we actually call Austin the magician. So don't listen to him. He's one of the best in all of baseball. Ask him how to hit Thanks. it. <laughs> Thanks for your question, Austin, though. Austin really wanted to say it's God given. That's how he wanted to answer that. <laughs> it's like my Call of Duty skills. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we got another late submission here. Another one for Barnsey. This one coming uh -oh. in from Arizona. God, he's popular. Oh. Barnsey is it. Where's the first side? Look at, look at, look at hey, Austin right. Barnes. Why did the Arizona State head coach move you from second base to catcher? <laughs> my guy no i started honestly i started catching because our backup catcher no tell the real story tell the real that's story. what it was i'm telling you no murph made me pat murphy, <laughs> pat, murphy, pat murphy made me he said you're not you're too slow to play the infield <laughs> and he said you're not dustin pedroia Stop trying to act like you're Dustin Pedroia. <laughs> wow. That's what he said. And it, it just became a Sun Devil Zoom party. Yeah. <laughs> See, so, Alana, Alana and Joe, this is what the listeners get and the viewers get to see, all this banter in the clubhouse. This is what happened. So Austin's got pretty thick skin. You can see that. Yeah. Yeah, Barnsey, Barnsey, did you ever thank Murph for moving you to catch her? No, I didn't have to. He thanked himself. <laughs> <laughs> how many people every time I see him? How many he people? makes up the story that my dad called him. It's the craziest thing in the world. It's it's just wild. No, but Murph's the man. He 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 did he really helped me a lot. Oh. Right, so I'm Andre and Austin ASU guys obviously. Clayton did not go to ASU. So that's fine. No. We have a fan question for Clayton first off. Go ahead, guys. Hi, Clayton Kershaw. My name's Henry, and I have a question for you. What 
age did you first start throwing a curveball? And can you please show me your grip? Thank you. Man, that was a sure sick bobblehead collection. Um, yeah, I can show you. But first of all, along, I have a high school uh, diploma, so that's way better than any Arizona State schooling. But either of those um, are <laughs> <laughs> the same. Ball, yes, I can show you. So I have a ball here. I kind of carry one always. But weird. Uh, weird. So I put left-handed, I put my middle finger on this seam right here. And then I put my thumb on that seam right there. And then – Honeycutt, Rick, uh, Richard, our old pitching coach, always talks about getting that knuckle as far beneath the ball as you can. So as you get bigger hands, you're going to start doing that. But then really, it's just like you shake somebody's hand right at the end. Just shake somebody's hand. And that's how you throw a curveball. I mean, kind of. I mean, Woody and DP, they all do it differently, but that's kind of how I throw mine. Kirsch, when did you actually start throwing that curve? How old were you when you kind of started? Uh, probably like – Probably like 11 or 12 would be my guess. Yeah, somewhere in there. And David, what about you? When did you start throwing that curve? Uh, I would say 12, around 11 and 12 years old. Yeah. Woody, about the same age? Yeah, probably, probably somewhere around there. I mean, it really probably didn't do anything. I tried to throw like a football probably, but I didn't get a breaking ball until I was like probably 20 years old. So. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah, he never threw a curveball, Lana. He throws a breaking ball, okay? Oh, it's a breaking ball. ball. Uh, hey, I, I, don't I don't confirm the labels, all right? <laughs> I was wondering if there was a, a too early of an age to start with the, uh, the breaking ball. Of, like, when do you switch from fastballs to all that, other, all that other jazz? Is it too early at a certain point? Uh, did you – if it's too early, is that yeah. what she asked? Yeah. Um, yeah, there's definitely an age that's too soon, but, you know <laughs> – it's a tough thing to I, – I don't know the answer to that. Every kid is different based on how they grow, and I'm not going to tell, you know, a parent when or when not to, but I'd like Charlie to be able, you know, my son, my oldest son, to, you know, be able to learn how to throw the other stuff first and really make sure that he can command his fastball before he starts doing other stuff. Yeah. David, there he is. I was gonna. I was just gonna ask you how much you're enjoying being dad, right? We all miss baseball. This is a pretty great bonus family time, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, we usually don't get to uh, to see the little milestones in person, whether it's crawling or taking those first steps. You know, we usually see that stuff through the phone or on Facetime, and to uh, have that opportunity to to get to share some of these moments with the family is, you know, you can't. Um, you can't put a price on that. It's really cool. I know that you guys are probably uh, have all watched the last dance. If you haven't by now, I'm sure you'll you'll get caught up with it. But um, Alex, I'm going to start with you. If you could have the career of any other athlete, who would you choose? Mm, the career of any other athlete. Oh my god. Oh, that's deep. Um, that's tough. I'm probably. Oh, I'll, I'll say Tiger Woods. Yeah. That's that's going to be my answer. I'll stop my, my head. There's probably a lot of other good ones, but that'll be my answer for now. You don't do you, have you golf. golf in your life? I'm tired. You don't even golf. Huh? That's exactly golf. He wants to be a good golfer, I guess. Oh, okay. All right. You're going to own all the other stuff, too? Tiger Woods stuff? I mean, that's quite a career. That's quite a life. <laughs> hey, he keeps it fresh, you know? He keeps it fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, you all right? <laughs> I'm not all right. <laughs> JT, what about you? If you could have the career of anybody else, who would it be? Man, you know, I want to be like Mike. Not Jordan. I want to be Mike Trout. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hit a baseball that far. <laughs> you could call. I see we, uh, I see we got a... Another friend that's joined, Joe Coy. Joe, you I'm are muted him. right now. Unmute yourself first. Unmute. 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 There you are. There you go. Watch it. Joe, that, am I in? You're in. How you doing? I'm happy now. Yeah. How are you guys? Good. Doing good, Sorry, Joe. Look at the hat, you guys. This is this is a cherish. I got to bring my dad. Uh, longtime Dodger fan to the World Series. 
and uh and it's just fun that he's uh actually witnessing this right now with you guys so i love you guys you are uh you grew up or you were born in the northwest but moved to la and you are a long time Dodgers fan, right uh the mariners first and then i moved to la yeah. became a dodgers fan my stepdad 100 percent dodgers fan from the beginning man yeah taking him to the world series was the best day ever uh, tell me about something. You have some memory with the Gibson home run, right? Did somebody yeah. call that? Tell me that story. Uh, that was my bet. I bet him and then, uh, you know, called him out on it and fucking hit the ball out of the park. It was just unbelievable. And, uh, and I didn't uh, pay him back until, what, 20 years later? But uh, every year he always called for his money. So. so somebody actually predicted Gibson was going to hit the home run. No, he just he just goes, Bubba, it's going out of the park. They're winning, goddamn it, Bubba. They're going to win. And unbelievable, he knocked it out of the park. I couldn't believe it. So wow. wow. Hey, uh, I want you to be have a chance to ask some of the current guys some questions yourself. But first, I want to put you on the spot to tell us a little bit about your Netflix special. Uh, yeah, we got another one. This is going to be my third one. Uh, and we shot this one in the Philippines, man. So it was pretty cool to actually bring Netflix to the Philippines and just show people that just comedy is comedy. It doesn't matter, you know, what language you speak. As long as you're funny, people are going to laugh. And it was just fun to actually see people in the Philippines. We didn't change anything. We just, as if I was shooting it in, a, in L.A., man. They, they were getting it and laughing, and it was, it was a fun time, man. Excellent, excellent. Uh, what do you want to ask? June 12th. June 12th? Yeah. Yeah. What do you want to ask the guys? Any questions you want to fire off? Man, I just, uh, what are we going to do with uh, uh, this season, man? I, I, I can't wait for baseball to start. I, I just, uh, I want to get back in the park. And how do you guys feel about adjusting with no fans in the park? And I know you guys heard this a thousand times, but I mean, baseball is baseball, and I can watch it on TV. I, you know, I just how are you guys going to react to that? I think well, uh, you that one, JT. Yeah, I think we're just as antsy as you are about getting back in and, and getting started again. And it's going to be weird playing with no fans, especially in Dodger Stadium, because our fans bring it better than any other fans in baseball. And, and there's yeah. no place, there's no place to play like like Dodger Stadium. When, there is when you have fifty thousand plus. Uh, going nuts and screaming that's the energy we feed off of and, and we we live for so it's going to be it's going to be adjustment for sure we're gonna have to find ways to motivate ourselves and find ways to uh create adrenaline uh yes. without the fans yes man for sure nothing uh nothing more exciting than uh you walking up and then just feeling the energy of the uh the crowd and then that motivates you to just you know step it up but for us, it's like, how do we, how do we get that, 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 that energy? Where does it come from? How do we pull from it? And it's just, it's, it's such a hard adjustment. Yeah, definitely. Oh, you got so, uh, be some crazy house parties. Yeah, the Dodgers right. when they start again, though. Joe, we'd like you to hang out with us a little more. Um, we're going to fire some questions around the group again. Justin, you said you want to be like Mike, and then you said Trout. But back to MJ, that Mike. Uh, we watched the last dance. A lot of us that just concluded. Any debate in anybody's mind? Jordan versus LeBron, greatest of all time. Are there any LeBron guys, or is it no question? It's been there? No question. Jordan. Yeah. Jordan. It's not yeah. even a conversation. It's Michael Jordan. But what's the point? I mean, what's the point in proving the unprovable, Joe? I mean, you can't prove it. You just talk yeah. about it. And I, I think that's what's so funny about this is everybody just talks like it's like the most important thing in the world, but you can't prove it. It's two different players at two different times. I right. think it's impossible to prove. I used I, to believe you were better than Sandy Koufax, Kirsch. I take it back. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's not worth it. It's not I worth think, I don't know. I think uh, I, just watching uh, the documentary, you actually see just how far behind the scenes that. There is a comparison that we can, you know, judge the two. It's a completely different game. I feel like what Michael went through is won't happen again. We won't see that. Isn't it part of what makes sports great, too, though? Like debates like that, that you can take a stance one side or another, you know, the passion that comes with it. Yeah, if you don't want to win an argument, sure. But if you just want to talk to talk, <laughs> go for it. That's what I do. I get paid to talk. To talk. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I won't follow in your footsteps. Too. Yeah. Uh, anybody? Okay, so Clayton, you don't have to answer this. 
Uh, six NBA rings for Jordan. Six Super Bowls for Tom Brady. Who are you taking on that one? I think Jordan. Yeah. Any reason? I, Jordan, yeah. I felt like it was his individual effort. Crazy in those games. Yeah. That last Jazz game when he stole the ball and made the shot. That's great. I haven't, wow. I haven't watched the episode in Ted, Margie. Thanks. Hey, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's already happened, man. It's already happened. Oh, that's so funny. Hey, Justin, Michael stole the ball. And... Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was, I was watching Kobe. It, it happened a long time ago. I was watching Kobe's 60 point game the other night, and I was like nervous because they were down like 13. Hilarious. Five minutes left, and he only had like 40 points. And I'm like, hey. how's he going to get to 60? It was crazy. Yeah, how good was Carl Malone, though? Carl Malone and like oh, Reggie man. Miller. They were nasty. Unbelievable. Uh, Kirsch, so we've got, we've got a couple MVPs on here today. Obviously, you won one in 14. Cody won one last year. Uh, what advice would you give to Cody or anybody coming off a season like that to try and follow up a huge season, an MVP caliber campaign? Um, man, Bopper doesn't need any advice. He's going he's gonna to keep doing his thing and um, – you know, everybody says, don't try to do what you did last year. Just try to, you know, focus on the next game. But at the end of the day, everybody has expectations they put on themselves. And, um, you know, Belly expects more out of him than, than we all do out of him. And that's ultimately what you want is to have him have high expectations for himself. So we all expect big things out of Bopper, and I'm sure he expects even better because that's who he is. Awesome. Clayton, did you feel like you had a target on your back following your MVP season? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think, um, I mean, I think every guy would say that, you know, if you've had a little success, people like if you face somebody that's had a little success, you definitely try to, um, it feels good to beat them, you know? So I think maybe, you know, I, I always feel that when you go against guys that have had a lot of success, you want to be, you want to kind of knock off, knock them off the pedestal. So, um, I'm sure guys would maybe say the same. I don't know. Here, you can hold my phone. One guy that has had a lot of fun with us as well is your fellow left-hander and David Price. And David, we uh, we have another fan question for you, sir. If you don't mind, take a look. All right. This question's for David. Hi, David. Welcome to the Dodgers in the city of Los Angeles. And how does it feel to switch divisions for the first time in your career and you're going to have to hit more? Not anymore. Uh, I heard, how does it feel to switch divisions for the first time in my career? And you got to hit more. Um, well, I'm looking forward to that. Well, yeah, not if we, uh, not if we have the universal D8. Quick, girl. <laughs> um, that was definitely one of the things I was um, most excited about was being able to uh, – to get to try and hit. You know, that's um, one of the things that I really enjoy doing is swinging a bat. Haven't been on the bases a whole lot in my um, 40 or 50 at bats, but uh, I think it's something that I would enjoy doing until I get a strawberry or um, or something like that. If you get too tied out on the bases, but um, I'm excited for it. You know, hopefully we, uh, we get this thing going here sooner rather than later and I can, um, I can mark off an extra base hit. <laughs> Can you throw him a bone and get him a pinch shit appearance? Yeah. Say it one more time. I just said, Doc, we, we, he can throw you a bone. I don't, don't see, I don't see it happen, Joe. <laughs> All right, David. Dieter <laughs> uh, Dieter is on with us. Dieter, why don't you take us into the seventh inning stretch? Hey, guys.
Somebody else catch that. Lon photos in there. So good. Couple of those got their way in there, didn't they? Yeah, looks like I think I know who put together the slideshow. Uh, I got another fan question for Cody. Roll the Wake up, Cody. <laughs> hey, my, better hurry before my phone dies. <laughs> Roll that fan question for Cody, guys. Only one. There's only one. Hi, my name is Shui, and I play for Dodgers OBI. I'm 12 years old. And my question's for Cody. Cody, do you ever get anxiety when you're at bat? If so, can you give me some tips? Do I ever get excited? Was that the question? Anxiety, anxiety Cody. Oh. Anxious, nervous. I, yeah, I get anxiety before uh, my first at bat every single game. Uh, and then usually, you know, once you step in the box, it all goes away. But I would say, like, when you're on the on-deck circle, you usually get that, like, excitement, anxiety feeling. And you still care. Cody, we okay. need to look here. That's right. <laughs> All right. That's this, right. Uh, this is a fan question um, for everybody. We'll go ahead and play the fan question, then JT will start with you. Uh-oh. Hey, Dodgers. It's Elise and Emily in California, and we just wanted to let you know that we just got two puppies. We named them Cody and Taylor after Cody Bellinger and Chris Taylor, and our question for you is if you can name a puppy after any baseball player, um, who would you name it after? You know, someone that's inspired you or just you love their name. Who would you want your little furry friend named after? Bye. Bye. Justin, you have a moonshine min pin, but if you had to name uh, your pup after a, a baseball player, someone that inspired you, who would it be? We did, didn't it? Wally Moon, you know? Moonshine? Okay. <laughs> yeah, right? Is that where it came from? <laughs> Is that... No, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a good thing they named him Cody and Taylor since they are roommates and the dogs are living together. It makes a lot of sense. You know? <laughs> You'd ask dog, too. <laughs> Cody, what about you? You have Bella at home, right? What would you name a dog? Uh, if there was I don't know if I would name a dog after a player. I want to name my dog Iris after the Goo Goo Dolls. <laughs> Out of way. The belly. All right. That's like the David, point of the game, belly. David, if you had a, another another name for a pup, what would it be? Um, I mean, I like Yogi. Yeah. I think that's a, oh, that's a good, good answer. Dog name. Okay. That's a good answer. And Woody, you have a Pax of Cavapoo. Uh, and if you had another dog, what would it be? I would name him uh, uh, Barney after Austin Barnes because he's my dog. <laughs> That's my guy, Woody. That's my guy, Woody. We had the perfect host for this question here, Lana. First, you guys don't have pups, but if you if the if the kiddos, let's say Callie Ann wanted a pup, Charlie and, and Cooper really don't care. If Callie Ann wants one. What are you naming it? Do I? I mean, she's probably going to name it uh, like <laughs> Polly Pocket or uh, something. But if I get to pick. <laughs> Dog player name, uh, I don't know, maybe Mo, like Mariano, like Rivera, Mo. Mo's a good one, I think. would be a good pup. <laughs> I was just looking at some of the signed balls I have. Mo's probably a good one. <laughs> I think, uh, Riz, I think our bench coach, Bob Guerin, has the best dog name of all. He absolutely uh, does. His, name, his name's Bob Guerin. His dog's Hank, so his dog is Hank Guerin. Hank Guerin. How great. <laughs> hey, hey, Rich Hill, the name of their dog is XYZ. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Elon Musk. Next level. Barnsley's is pretty good. Bella Bella Cool J. Yeah, she's the truth. Yeah. So, <laughs> Dre, do you guys have dogs? I do not have a dog. Nope. No. Uh, <laughs> He's got a farm. <laughs> and Doc, you guys have three dogs, right? We have three dogs, um, and uh, we have a, a Sunday. We have a, a Maggie, and we have a a Maury named after Maury Will. Yeah. See, now the Davis family needs to get a dog. Nope. Nope. No dogs. Nope. Do it. Do it. Yeah. You're a cat guy. Come on. Good guy. <laughs> Good guy. Hanging out with. Hanging out with Godson. 
All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go ahead and, and close this out pretty soon. But is there anything uh, that you guys want to say to each other, uh, to the fans out there listening tonight? Uh, Justin, we'll, uh, we'll start with you. Uh, I'll say it again this week. Uh, we're missing it as bad as you guys are. We're looking forward to get back on the field. Um, we appreciate you hanging out with us and doing this. We, we have fun with it and, and hope you guys uh, enjoy spending some time with us. Rashad, on behalf of the, on the, uh, behalf of the pitching staff, what do you want to say? Uh, JT sounded great. I agree with that. Um, J that's why we let JT talk. He's good at it. So we just let him, but no, he's right. We want to play and we're excited to at some point, hopefully, and we miss it. And uh, it's not going to be the same without fans, obviously, but also like JT said, there's going to be a lot of fun Dodger parties around LA uh, whenever we get back to playing, we know it. So um, thank you guys for listening to us talk. I know you'd rather watch us play. We'd rather play too, but thanks for listening to us. Guys, thanks uh, for always taking time out of your days to be with us, Dre. It's always good to have you guys on here. Uh, be safe, be sane. Uh, and to all of you watching these guys and listening at home, thank you for uh, being with us. And thanks to 76 for presenting this Dodgers Zoom party. And we have another one on Monday, same time, same bat channel. We also have one on Thursday. Um, and we're going to have Fernando Valenzuela on. Jorge and Jaime Harin are going to be on as well. We're going to have some special Dodgers players. So join us on Thursday for that one in Spanish and back on Monday um, for another Dodgers Zoom party. Have a great night, you guys. Take care. See you guys. Bye, fellas. Bye, guys. Bye, See you later. Later.